And uh, now I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Jimmy Yanis. He's an associate professor of dermatology here at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Uh, he did his uh, medical school at Baylor and his residency at Mayo. And he is an expert on atopic and contact dermatitis, uh, everything itchy, and uh, really a pleasure to have him. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for hanging out. Can you hear me okay? Oh, good. Thanks for uh, sticking with us since it's uh, late in the morning and I realize that I'm a substantial barrier between you and the meal. Um, so the itchy patient, I dare say a huge portion of the patients that walk in your door express that as a concern. So my goal today is to actually make life a bit easier for your patients and for you. I have one conflict and that is a database that I created that we'll talk about briefly. So common causes of itch, how to teach your patients in quick order, how to avoid the things that trigger this sort of itch, and embedded in this, in the handout that you have, is actually additional handouts that are patient ready. Because I view myself as a pragmatist, I'm hoping that throughout the rest of this lecture you'll be able to sit back, relax, and know that you'll have tools that will actually be able to help your patients. So the morphology of acute dermatitis. So here's a patient who actually has an exogenous exposure. You see the linear microvesicles. Pretty easy to tell that it's an acute dermatitis. Whereas here, someone who's had it for an awfully long time, rubbing, thickened, lichenified, but there's some hot action in there too. You can see some pink patches as well. So I try to be a bit of a lumper, not a splitter, but it's still important to think through a few of these components as you're doing your medical decision making. Do you have to say it out loud necessarily to your patient? Perhaps not, but generally when I'm going over dermatitis or eczema, if I use the word dryness as my opening line about what it is that's causing their itch, nothing tends to rev up my patients more than go, oh brother, I came to the doctor to hear that I have dry skin. So please keep it in mind that it's in the teaching documents that we have. Your medical brains actually help so sort through the underlying uh, causes. I tend to think about atopics with a pretty low threshold in terms of Anyone who's got a little bit of allergic rhinitis, wool makes them itch. I'll throw that into my medical decision making. We'll give some examples of irritant and contact, uh, or irritant and uh, contact dermatitis. So again, is it just dry skin? A portion of the work that you do as a portion of your daily evaluations of your patient is to do a good thorough history and physical. And by no means do I have the notion that a 